Alright, so when I got my GPD Win 2 a few years back, it can already emulate Dolphin pretty well, despite having to go with Ichiruka, which is a fork of Dolphin that prioritized performance over accuracy. But of course, when I was upgrading to the Win Max, I was pretty sure the performance would be even better, and there's no need to do any inaccurate emulation from Ichiruka anymore. So I was actually quite surprised when I saw quite a lot of you on Reddit having trouble setting up Dolphin. Quick question, do GameCube and Wii games run well from my microSD? Yes, I currently have my Dolphin installed on my SSD, and all my ROMs including other consoles are stored on a microSD. Do Galaxy 2 and Galaxy 1 play well with regular gamepad, or what gamepad you use to play Wii games on the GPD? Galaxy 1 and 2 do play well if you set it up right, I'll talk more about this later, and yes, I'm just using the gamepad mode on the WinMax, but I do whip out an 8-bit though if I want some 2-player action. For me, I have to have it plugged in, still can't figure out why. You probably have maximized battery prioritized in your Intel control panel, or down here at the battery setting. Why play with an emulator when there are huge quantity of high quality games available on PC? Is there a way to make different profile for different games or is it not necessary with your setup? Yes, that's one of the big things I'm gonna go super in depth in this video, so yep. Do you undervote when using Dolphin or just run at stock? No, I do not undervote my Winmax or underclock or overclock or overvote. Everything is stock, just a Winmax fresh out of a box. So if that's all you need to know, you're welcome. With that out of the way, I'm gonna share my setup with you guys today and gonna go through some useful features and how to maximize your performance. Other than that, I'll also be going over a controller guide for those having trouble setting up motion control emulation. By the end of the tutorial, I'm hoping all of you would have achieved the following things. 1. Have not just a working and full speed dolphin, but getting the best picture quality as well. 2. Control and graphical settings tailor made for each game. 3. The option to toggle between controller profiles in game, hotkeys to get you in and out of games easily. And 4. Using cheat codes to play some games that originally run at 30fps in 60. Before I get started, I just want to mention I ain't no BSOD gaming. I'm simply sharing with you what works for me on my device. Things I'm about to share is as technical as it gets for me. If there are anything that I didn't cover in the video, I'll try my best to help out, but there's no guarantee. Both my setup, you should be able to get over 3 times the resolution without lag. Not that you should anyway, that's literally overkill. But with my setup, you can achieve these performance. Also a shameless plug, but you can follow me on Twitter if you want to chat about games and stuff. And if you're liking the video so far, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And with that said, here's HMR's personal ultimate Dolphin setup guide. So to get you all started, the Intel driver I'm using on my WinMax is 8190. If you're missing the Intel control panel, check my video that should pop out right about now, then come back here. I'll get this out the way first. The only thing that needs changing is making sure in your power tab, both battery and plugged in mode is set to maximum performance, that's all. So setting virtual memory is something I see from CMU setup guides a lot, but it might be useful for Dolphin as well. So just type performance in your Windows search box and click on this option, then in advanced tab, click change then set both option to 10,000. That's depending how much room you have on your SSD, but there should be no reason to go over 10,000 as the performance gain is literally unnoticeable. Then click set and OK, and then reboot your WinMax. Next, for the emulator itself, I'm using the latest beta version. These builds are pretty up to date with features, but have less bugs than the development builds. And make sure you install Visual C++, which will be in the description or the red box here, or else you'll be getting VC runtime errors. Alright, this is something extra, but if you want your Dolphin to open full screen every time, make a shortcut to Dolphin and right click on it, go properties and run maximize. If you got all that set up, let's get into the meat of the video. So first up, within the graphic settings. Since the WinMax is pretty powerful already, I don't see much difference between DirectX 11 and 12, but for myself, I'm using 11. Next, keep your aspect ratio to force 16 by 9 for minimal scaling problems. VSync on, and check use full screen so your game always opens in full screen. And as for shader compilation, async uber shaders will give you the least stutters and graphical glitches, while skip drawing will have a lot of pop-ins. For Win2, skip drawing is better for performance, but for WinMax you should go with async uber shaders for the best quality and performance. Moving on to the next tab, enhancement. 2 times resolution is the sweet spot for me, going any higher will give you minimal visual boost, but it really hurts the performance. 
So I've had some issues with enabling anti-aliasing in some games, but 99% of the games, this is safe to have it open. I just prefer having it off for better compatibilities. If you want your game to scale to 16x10, check the widescreen hack box. Otherwise, keep it off. And if you want widescreen support for older 4x3 games, here's the link to some cheat code that will get you proper widescreen support with the in-game HUD scaling properly. Moving on to hacks, for most of the games, keep Skip EFB on for better performance. But with the Winmax, having Skip EFB off will make emulation more accurate. And this is required for some games to work, like the Blue Stars in Mario Galaxy. I'll go over how to set a shortcut key to toggle between on and off later in the video. But other than that, copy the rest of the settings on the video. It should be pretty similar by default already. After you've done that, you can go ahead and close the window. And we'll now move on to the config settings. In the General tab, make sure you check Enable Cheats. This will be necessary for adding widescreen cheat codes, or just other cheats in general. And I've disabled auto-update since future update might affect performance. Moving on to interface, as you can see I'm using a black theme for Dolphin. It's pretty easy to go online and look for Dolphin themes, and they will be in the CSS file format. And when you've got a theme downloaded, place them in User, Document, Dolphin EMU, Styles, and after that check the Use Custom User Theme in Dolphin, and you're good to go. Next, hide the mouse cursor control. And if you want the box art for games, check this download game cover checkbox. Uncheck the use panic handler checkbox. And make sure you've checked hotkey required window focus to off. This will be necessary to get the seamless setup we're trying to do here today. We're going to jump directly to the Wii tab since there's no change in the audio or GameCube tab. So don't use the PAL 60 option since it breaks some games like Mario Kart Wii's online menu and some others I don't know. But if you want true 60 FPS, just make sure you're running the NTSC and not the PAL version of the game. Alright, so in the Advanced tab, make sure you don't, don't downclock your emulated CPU. This was useful for Win 2 to avoid some sound crackling when the game can't hit full speed. Downclocking on the Winmax will make your game run in slow motion, and you're not going to get any performance boost downclocking your game. But on Winmax, if you're using a 60 FPS cheat code for certain games, Overclocking your CPU will help make your games hit the 60fps mark, which I'll go over later in the video, in the per game config, where you can set specific overclocking amount for set game. So within this menu, you shouldn't have to mess with this slider at all. So starting with GameCube controller, this is pretty straightforward. So set all your keys accordingly, and make sure on your Winmax you've switched from mouse mode to X input mode, and your device is set to gamepad on Dovin. Something I feel like is worth mentioning is the LR triggers. So, since the GameCube has two levels of pressures, but the Winmax only has one, we'll be setting the R1 as shoulder R and R analog as trigger R. This is necessary for games like Mario Sunshine, where holding down R all the way uses flood when standing still, and while holding halfway, you can run around and spray. I think this is how Mario 3D All Stars will be handling this as well, since the Switch controller is digital like the Winmax. And after that, set L1 and L2 to C and L accordingly, so now you have all four shoulder buttons mapped to something different. The L triggers on the GameCube also has two layers of pressures, but the only game that requires this is Sunshine, and that only uses the R trigger, so this setup should be fail proof for pretty much all GameCube games. Mario Sunshine also has the X-axis camera inverted. So for your C-stick, you can set left to right and right to left. Just try to know what games you'll be playing and set your controls specifically for that game. And save each profile separately, since later in the video we'll be assigning each control profile to each game so your game will always open with that profile. And moving on to Wii remotes, always try to see what controller style is supported in that game. The Dolphin Wiki will be the perfect source for this, link will be in the description. Games like Call of Duty supports classic controller. So there's pretty much no point to use the emulate IR aiming with the analog stick. You don't have to generalize your profile to be one size fit all. Try to tailor make your profile specifically for that game so you get the best experience. So mapping keys are pretty straightforward, but sometimes you want to map multiple keys to the same button. So for that you want to right click on the key you want to set up, choose your input method, 
choose whatever button you want. This can be mouse click or keyboard as well. The detect button should take care of that. Then choose from operators. The common ones I usually use are N and O. N is for when you want multiple keys to be held down to activate one button. For example, I have the full screen toggle mapped to L3 and R3. So when both of them click, it toggles the full screen mode. O is when you want certain keys to be mapped to multiple buttons. So in this case, I have A and B from Wii Remote mapped to A and B on my Winmax, but also on the L and R. So I don't have to be so awkward like moving the right stick and trying to grab blue stars with the A button at the same time. This will be useful for mapping the Wii cursor control to both right analog sticks and the mouse cursor. Then you want to click select and add it to the line down here. Make sure everything is green, then click apply. So now you can control cursor using the right stick, touchpad, and the screen. The next useful features here I want to mention is the toggle hotkeys. Games like Paper Mario and Metroid Other M sometimes require you to point the Wii remote to the screen, but it's otherwise played like a 2D platformer. So setting the upright toggles lets you go between the two pretty seamlessly. Mario Galaxy is a good example here as it uses multiple control methods in the game. Combining motion, cursor, shake, and upright position can all be done in one controller profile if set up properly. Again, don't just try to copy what I have but try to know what each option does and experiment and make what you feel most comfortable using. So moving on to hotkeys, that can be accessed in the options tab and hotkey settings. Alright, so some of the more useful ones here are pause game, stop, toggle full screen, and disable emulation speed limit, and they'll all be in the general tab. Pausing the game within the game itself acts just like regular emulation for Dolphin. To truly pause the game, this hotkey pauses the emulation as a whole, so if you want to take a toilet break or something, this will be far easier on your battery than pausing within the game itself. Toggling full screen is pretty straightforward. Remapping this means you don't have to Alt Enter to go full screen anymore. I've mapped it to backspace, so it's easier on my hand, but you can map it to anything. Disable emulation speed limit is really useful for speeding up some unskippable cutscene in game, but side notes, it doesn't speed up loading screen, so. Now going over to the Wii and Wii Remotes tab. With newer builds of Dolphin, the Wii Remotes are less likely to be disconnected when not in use for a while, or when booting a game. But if that does happen, you can use this to quickly connect. It was more useful on Win 2 where I was using an older version of Dolphin, but I kept it here just in case. If you have multiple game profile or control profiles saved for a game, you can set a key to swap between these profiles here, so this will be very useful for someone. Onto the graphics tab, the only one I have here is the EFB copies. Like I said in the graphics settings earlier, this is an option required in certain games like Mario Galaxy for you to grab blue stars, but it can be really taxing on your CPU. But since the Winmax is also modern enough to emulate Wii smoothly even with it on, this might not be as useful, but setting it off will also have an improvement for most games that don't require it if you don't find it necessary. And finally, you can manage your safe state hotkeys in this tab, but that's pretty self-explanatory, so moving on. Okay, so this is the big part. This is where your whole setup really comes together and getting that seamless experience. This is where you apply controls and video profiles to each game and kind of just let Dolphin do everything else. Changing the controls and video settings used to be manual, but when this is all set up, it is done automatically when you start the game. Alright, so right click on the game and go properties. So in the general tab, there's nothing to mess about on WinMax. There's no need for any more performance boost from here, so instead, go to the editors tab. So down here at the user config is where all the magic happens. So if you want to get a better look, go presets, editor, and open an external. 
Like I said, this is on a per game basis, so whatever you do here won't affect other games. So how the heck do you get all these stuff working? It's actually really straightforward, so here's the link to the Dolphin forum that lists everything you ever need to customize each game to your liking, so that will be in the description. And now, there are just simply too many options and there's no way I can go through all of them. So I'm just gonna go over several big ones that a lot of you might find useful. So to get you all started, every option has its own category. You can add any options from that category just as a list under it. The category type will be on the form. And if it isn't in your text file, just edit by doing the bracket and typing as is from the form, like core, video settings, video hack, control, with the underscore of course, and etc. Aspect ratio equals zero, will set to auto. One, will force into 16 by nine. Two, four four by three. And setting to three will stretch the image to fill the screen. This is useful when certain games with widescreen patch doesn't work properly and you want to retain that original 4x3 look. Also in the video settings category, internal resolution set to 0 will render your game at winmax resolution, so in this case 800p, and setting to 1 will give you Wii's native resolution, 2 will be 2 times, and 3 for 3 times, so on and so forth. Unless the game is lagging and you want to drop the resolution to 1 times, you shouldn't have to mess with this, as I feel like 2 times is the sweet spot for winmax. Lastly, I want to touch on the overclocking features for games that have 60 FPS patched applied to it. So like Mario Sunshine and Xenoblade Chronicles, the game might need to be overclocked in order to hit the 60 FPS mark. So to have that set up, create a new category called Core, C-O-R-E, then under it create a new line called Overclock and then put your value in there. So for this specific option, it reads the number as a multiplier. So for 1.0, that's 100%. 1.5 for 150 and 2.0 for 200% etc. Then under that line you want to enable the overclocking amount by adding this new line. Overclock enable and set that to true and you should be all set. Speaking of cheat codes, gecko codes can be downloaded from within Dolphin for each game. But action replay and certain more obscure codes like widescreen patch that aren't in Dolphin's database can be found online pretty easily, you just have to google them. I'll also have a link to a 60fps cheat code, so make sure you check the description if you need those. But adding a cheat code is pretty easy and straightforward, so just head to whatever code you have accordingly, whether it is an action replay or gecko code, then copy and paste the code you just got and give it a name, save it, then it should pop up in your list and make sure you enable it, and everything should be working but make sure the cheat code you've added are for the region of your game or else it won't work. But the most important part per game config that ties everything together is loading controller profile when you boot the game. Okay, so under the controller category, pad type 0 equals 6 is for enabling player 1 GameCube controller, and pad type 0 equals 0 turns that controller off. And pad Profile 1 is to load profiles that you've saved in the controller settings. Make sure any symbols and space bars are kept exactly the same, so I'd recommend keeping the name simple. And as for Wii remotes, Wii Mode Source 0 equals 1 is for enabling player 1 Wii remote. And Wii Mode Source 0 equals 0 turns it off. And sometimes you'd want to turn the controller off because for certain games that supports both GameCube controller and the Wii remotes, like Brawl, turning on both will interfere with each other, so keeping it off will fix this problem. Wii Mode Profile 1 equals your profile name loads profiles you've saved in the Wii remote settings. Any attachments like the classic controller or the nunchuck are tied to the profile you made in the controller screen, so all you have to do here is just put your profile name and it should all work automatically. Alright, here's a bonus. If you want to go online in Dolphin on your Winmax, you need to dump your NAND from an actual Wii. Since custom servers has long stopped letting Dolphin users just create a Dolphin online profile to avoid hacking in online matches. And I'll be linking a video in the description on how to dump your NAND from your Wii and get it running in Dolphin. Otherwise, you're all done here. You have no trouble running 99% of Dolphin games. If you watched the video all the way up until this point, that's goddamn impressive. And if there's anything I didn't cover in the video, well that's too bad, go bother with someone else on Discord maybe. But again, if this video is helpful to you, share it around, or maybe even consider subscribing, but anyways, thanks for watching.